If a man somehow gained the powers of a spider, he would have incredible strength. Miss Hoffman is a reporter for the Weekly Examiner. I never know when I'm going to see Spider-Man. Well, that's all right. I'll just sort of tag along, and that way I'll be there when you do see him next time. It's the only way we can make our point. You built a bomb. To prove how easy it was. Do you realize what they could do with an atomic bomb? What's this all about? I want the plutonium. Yeah! Run, Gail! Get after them! and let's talk, okay? No. I'm all through talking. special delivery. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, how's Mr. Jameson as a boss? <laughs> well, Corinne, I'll tell you. 
After one year on the job, I can honestly say he's, uh, different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, listen, that's my other line. I I'll call you later. Okay, bye-bye. Mr. Jamison's office. Uh-huh. You want him to donate to what? Honey, you got the wrong Mr. Jamison. You're welcome. <laughs> the Atlantic Socialist Alliance wants Mr. Jamison to make a donation. <laughs> Mr. Jamison? <laughs> yes, and he's so conservative, he wouldn't even eat a piece of steak if it was a little bit pink. <laughs> Rita, did I hear you say that you've been here almost a year? Mm-hmm. I can't believe it's been that long. Seems longer to you, too, huh? <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, it's really nice having you here. I mean, it's nice having somebody else on my side, if you know what I mean. Well, thanks, Pete. But it works both ways. I mean, everybody needs somebody to talk to. Which reminds me, I saw your pal Spider-Man on the news last night. Oh, yeah, so did I. Does this mean our mystery man is going public, hmm? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't. It's just that there really wasn't any other way for him to handle that. I mean, Rita, that girl was going to jump. Well, a little publicity never hurt anybody. In Spider-Man's case, I'm not so sure that's true. Rita, would you get me the files on last year's garbage strike, please? Hello, Parker. Hi, Mr. Jameson. I suppose you're here to sell me some exclusive photos on Spider-Man in action. Well, no, I, I, I saw that on television, too. I'm sorry about that, sir. Come on, boss. You can't expect Pete to get every photo of Spider-Man. Oh, I can't, can't I? Why else do you suppose I've got him on the payroll? Now, that's not fair. Pete does a good job every time you send him out. Which isn't nearly as often as I'd like, sir. Keep out of this, will you, Parker? It's true. You never put him on the big stories. If I'd have wanted a partner to help me make decisions here, I'd have gotten one 30 years ago. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jameson, I have an idea for a story that I think you'll really like. You have an idea for a story? Yes, now, I'm sure you're really going to like this. Not now, but can't you see that I'm busy? Oh, Sam. You know, Rita, you really shouldn't talk to him like that. He could have you fired. He wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, he would. And he will, too, if you make him mad enough. And he has some very important friends that could make it very difficult for you to get another job. Oh, yeah? Well, I got some friends, too, that could make it very difficult for him to keep the tires on his rolls, if you know what I mean. Rita, you are terrific. What is so important for you to drag me off a tennis court? I want to show you something I got from a TV station in New York. Couldn't this have waited? This is a piece of history you're seeing. Spider-Man has been seen on the rooftops of the city for a long time now, but this is his debut on the 6 o'clock news. The young woman had been on the ledge for over an hour. According to New York Police Department spokesman Captain Barbera, she resisted all attempts to talk her out of it. In the captain's own words, we needed a miracle, I guess you could say we got one. I'm sure we would have lost her if it hadn't been for Spider-Man. That's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Incredible? Wrong word. Why don't you try ridiculous? I want you to get the examiner an interview with that Spider-Man character. I want to do a cover story on him. You're kidding. You want to do a cover story on some weirdo who thinks he's a cross between Rudolf Nureyev and Tarzan? The public will eat it up. Oh, oh, Sid, why me? Because he's a man, and you have a way of getting men to do what you want. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Then why can't I persuade you to put somebody else on this story? Because I know you too well. You're hmm. on the 730 into Kennedy. Hmm. Wait a minute. How am I supposed to get in touch with this nut? Look him up in the phone book. Funny, gal, funny. There's some people you should see for research. The real key is a college student who's a part-time photographer for the New York Daily Bugle. Until this news film, he was the only one that was ever able to get close to this Spider-Man. Hmm. Peter Parker. That's the one. Hmm. Dr. Bailey, you can't be serious. You actually plan to operate the reactor here at the university? Yes, I have all the clearances. Well, sir, it's one thing to conduct an experiment, to, to build a model, but to actually operate it, that means you'd have plutonium in this very building. Mr. Parker, we're talking about something 
a little under five kilos. Now, that's hardly a significant amount. Furthermore, it's already been delivered. Dr. Bader, I hope you have created the perfect breeder reactor. I mean, I'd love to believe that there'll be no danger, but I just can't. Well, the reactor will produce exactly the same amount of plutonium oxide as it uses. There'll be no waste and no danger. And the material will be stored in the safe room in the lab. Safe room? There's no such thing. If you inhale plutonium oxide, you could be dead in a matter of hours. They don't call that stuff the deadly dust for nothing. Look, terrorists could come in here and steal that stuff and build a bomb. It's ridiculous. The security's been doubled on the lab. Oh, <laughs> some security. A bunch of old rent-a-cops. All right, suppose they did steal it. They'd have to be very sophisticated terrorists to turn it into a bomb. I am sorry, sir, but you are wrong. All the information you need is available at any good library. Everybody knows that. A university senior in physics could build one if he had the plutonium. Maybe he thinks he could build one. But would it explode? I certainly hope we never have to find out. All right, uh, I understand and I appreciate your fears. But I also believe that the potential benefit is well worth the risk. The world will have cheap nuclear power. And the bomb-grade material can be strictly monitored. Now, I'm offering the world a solution, not another problem. Believe me, this is the way of the future. We'll continue this discussion on Wednesday. The way of the future. Sure. Someday atomic bombs are going to be like electric can openers. Everybody's going to have one. Hey, lighten up. If there was just some way we could convince Dr. Baylor. Maybe what he needs is a push. What do you mean? I don't know. Um, maybe he could get the bugle to write a story. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe the publicity would put some real pressure on him. Well, you know, it's worth a try. I'll see you guys later, okay? Okay, Peter, take it easy. Right, Peter. Trying to do, tell him the whole thing? No, I just thought the way he was talking during the seminar that maybe he'd come in with us. <laughs> Peter, he's too straight. You know, it uh, would be good to have him with us. We don't need him. I can do everything he can. Okay. Spiders are your field, Dr. Lindsay. Arachnology, right? Very good. Like uh, spiders themselves, people who study them get little recognition. It's uh, always nice to meet someone who knows what we do. Then you've been following this character's exploits pretty closely, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> to uh, tell you the truth, I've been rooting for him. <laughs> rooting for him? Tell me, how do you think he does it? I wish I knew. But you must have some theory. Well, yes. If a man somehow gained the powers of a spider... How could he do that? <laughs> That's the part of the puzzle I haven't figured out yet. But if he did have the powers of a spider, he would be magnificent. He would have incredible strength. He could leap 20, 30 feet in the air. He would have a highly developed sixth sense. You mean a sense of danger? Exactly. He could spin a web? Mm -hmm. Walk up the side of a building? Mm -hmm. Walk on a ceiling? Yes. He undoubtedly could produce some kind of adhesive that would allow him to do all that. But, Mr. Jameson, the public has a right to know. Can you imagine what would happen if somebody stole that plutonium and used it to build a bomb? <laughs> you should be working for a science fiction magazine. I could build one. Uh, yes, what is it? A uh, Miss Hoffman is out here. Oh, well, ask her to come in. Somebody here wants to meet you. Mm. Mr. Jameson, Mr. Parker, how nice to meet you. I have been looking forward to this. Well, it's very nice to meet you, too, Miss... Ms. Hoffman. Gail. Oh. Miss Hoffman is a reporter for the Weekly Examiner. It's a national paper. Supermarket tabloid. Oh, yes. I've heard it. Uh, won't you sit down? She has an idea for a story. Now, as a matter of fact, it's something that I've been seriously thinking about for some time now. Uh, well, you tell him. I, we, want to do an interview with Spider-Man. The Examiner and the Daily Bugle print the story simultaneously. 
And since you're the only one who ever really gets close to him. Well, now, wait, I, I never know when I'm going to see Spider-Man. Well, that's all right. I'll just sort of tag along, and that way I'll be there when you do see him next time. If you don't mind. Well, of course he doesn't mind. <laughs> you don't mind. It won't be that bad, Peter. Peter, that's fascinating. Well, the way things are going now, by the year 2000, there could be millions of pounds of plutonium spread around the world. You really know a lot about these things. Tell me, how long have you known Spider-Man? Um, quite a while, I guess. You seem to know him better than anyone else. What is he like? What kind of fellow is he? Well, uh, he's fairly polite and uh, reasonably intelligent. Mm -hmm. What is he like physically? Physically? Well, I suppose you could say we're kind of similar types. Hmm. That's interesting. Peter, where are you going? Uh, uh, to class. I forgot. I have to see my instructor before the class begins. But don't worry. I'll be back. So please, just, just wait here, okay? Yup, his guards are gonna be coming back. Leave him alone, he's going as fast as he can. Shut up, Bolton. went into Dr. Bader's lab. Come on.
Bailey? Yes. Captain Barbera. Now, what's this all about? Five kilos of plutonium oxide are missing. That's the stuff they use to make a bomb with. That's it? right. But it's not dangerous unless they've opened the container. Well, what's that thing? It's a Geiger counter. Captain Give us the plutonium. Yes, Parker. It's gone. The lab is clean. Does that mean we're going to be okay? For the moment, yes. The whole city could be in danger. Take it easy, will you? Oh, let me get something straight here. Now, you guys, you guys uh, saw the break in and you called us, right? Yeah, he came in through the window. It was Spider-Man. Excuse me, sir. You say you saw Spider-Man right here in this lab? No, on the roof. What difference does it make? Who else would come in the window? Most cat burglars come in windows on upper floors. Who are you? It's all right, Captain. She's with me. I have my credentials. Gail Hoffman, I'm with the National Paper, the Weekly Examiner. <laughs> Great. Another one. Next, it'll be Woodward and Bernstein. Captain, what are you going to do? What else? Put out an APB on Spider-Man. <laughs> Relax. He'll be here in a minute. Me. Page 10. They just say it's missing. What? Let me see. Baylor says there is Virtually no danger of the material being used to build an atomic device. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Baylor. In fact, the real danger is to the people who have the plutonium. The police think that Spider-Man has it. I know. Oh, Craig, they're turning this thing into a joke. Well, we'll see how long they last. You mean we're going to go through with it? It's the only way we can make our point. We have to build the bomb. Believe me, the guns will leave for the subcontinent in the morning. Oh, and Boris, I understand that some armored cars are about to become available in South America. Of course I'm interested. It's my business. I know, Boris, planes. You want some planes. Boris, trust me, I'll make some calls in the morning. Yes. Goodbye, Boris. Get Angel. Meet me in the gymnasium. Yeah! 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 You want to see me, Mr. White? Yes. Take a look at these. Make the necessary arrangements. We're leaving for New York immediately. Well, there's nothing about the plutonium being recovered in any of the newspapers. That's good. Very good. That's what it really looks like. It's almost harmless, doesn't it? It isn't. I don't want either one of you to ever forget that. Remember, after this phase, we monitor the radiation levels at all times. Geiger counter on and roll.
when it cools, it would soften like putty and be practically pure. You mean it could be turned into a bomb? Oh, for sure. But it would be very dangerous just by itself. You see, it could go supercritical. Supercritical? Yeah, the mass would become so dense that then it would set off a chain reaction. You mean there could be an atomic explosion? Well, no, but just the release of radiation by itself would be dead. You take note, don't you? Yes. Peter, how do you know that Spider-Man didn't take the plutonium? Well, he just wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, right now, he's probably trying to figure out who did do it. If he's not involved, why doesn't he go to the police and prove it? Well, Gail, it's not quite that simple. I mean, think about it. I think Spider-Man does a lot of good, but if people knew who he was, well, it just wouldn't be the same thing. Nobody asked him to save the world. I don't really think he wanted any part of being a superhero. Then all he has to do is turn in his little blue tights. And what about his conscience? What is the point of having some kind of special power if you don't use it to help people? Okay. It could be a tough life. And lonely. How can he ever talk to people? The way we're talking right now. I mean, what kind of a life can he really have? Think about it for a minute. He has to lie to everybody. At work, to his friends. What about girlfriends? How could he ever hope to get married? And just have a normal life. People think it would be really wonderful to have Spider-Man's powers. Let me tell you, I'm not so sure whether it's a blessing or a curse. I doubt if he could have put that much better. You know, Parker, there's more to you than I thought. Hello? I'm speaking. Well, yeah, sure, I'll hold. It's John Aston Smith. The news anchorman? Yeah, he wants to interview me for the evening news. Well, yes, I guess I could speak for some of the students at the university. Well, if it would be convenient for you, perhaps you could come to my hotel, the Ramon, in, say, an hour? An hour? Fine, sure. Thank you. May I go with you? I've always wanted to meet him. Are you sure Parker is the one? I checked every student in Baylor seminar. Hmm. He's the only one smart enough to pull it off. When we do get the plutonium, what are you going to do with it? Same as I do with everything. Just put it up for sale to the highest bidder. Who are you? Captain Barbera? Yeah. Inspector DiCarlo. Well, what can I do for you? Bureau was wondering what progress you're making on this plutonium thing. Well, it's only been two days, but I've got one lead. The security guards who saw Spider-Man at the scene. What can you tell me about Spider-Man? Not much. He's given me a lot of sleepless nights. Do you think he's capable of doing something like this? Who knows? He could be capable of anything. Have you thought of the other possibilities? You mean like terrorists? I mean they don't even have to build a bomb, in theory. Just two kilos of plutonium oxide could cause millions of cases of lung cancer. Okay, stop it. You're scaring me. I mean to. Well, maybe we should go back to the university and talk to Dr. Baylor again. I've already talked to Dr. Baylor. You yeah. have? Did you get anything out of him? I asked him if he had any student who was capable of building a bomb with the missing plutonium. Yeah, what did he say? He came up with one name. Peter Parker. Parker? He's just a kid. I know him. Well, then maybe you can help me find him. You're serious about Parker. I'm dead serious. He said it was room 1001. Oh, it must be up this way. You, Parker. 
Come in, Mr. Parker. I've been expecting you. What's this all about? I want the plutonium. You think I... Oh, no, you're wrong. We'll see. Angel. I guess I got kind of caught up in the fight. <laughs> okay, buddy, I'm driving. Where am I going? Oh, uh... Well, we can't go to your apartment. No, that's right. Um, take us to the Hamilton. You can spend the night in my hotel suite. They'll never think of looking for you there. It's not a bad idea. must have a pass key. Let's get him up here. <laughs> Without a warrant? You feds may work that way, but not me. All right, let's go get a warrant. I'll call the bugle. They might know where he is. levels, aren't you? Of course. Here's the reflector. Properly? Well enough. Hey, Ted, the carriage looks great. I'm almost ready to start wiring. Well, let's get to it. Carlo from the Bureau. Parker, 
You weren't in your apartment last night. No, I wasn't. I spent the night here. That's right. On the couch, Captain. We want to talk to you, Parker. Yeah, we want to talk to you about what happened to us yesterday. What's bugging you? Well, Peter got a call from a man who said he was John Aston Smith. We wanted to interview him for the news as a student spokesman. And after we got there, they tried to kidnap us. Kidnap you? Why? Well, they thought I had something to do with the missing plutonium. Huh, that's funny. Well, we had the same idea. What? Y you thought I... Excuse me. Where were you when that stuff was stolen? I was in class. Uh-uh. We checked with your instructor. You never showed for that class. Well, I, I had to meet someone. Yeah, that's right. You met Spider-Man and you told him where to find the plutonium. Come on, Captain. You can't be serious. Can't I? How serious does a ride down to the station sound to you, Parker? Come on, let's go. After the cops left, I checked out Parker's apartment. He's got a lot of electronic equipment and a wall full of science books. But I couldn't find the plutonium anywhere. Well, maybe he doesn't have it. And why are we watching him? Because he's a very bright young man. If any of his fellow students have the plutonium, he'll find them for us. Oh, Pete, I'm not glad to see you. How oh, mad is he? What's the maddest you've ever seen him? Uh, the time he sent his shoes down to be shined and somebody stole them. Worse. Oh, great. Well, might as well get it over with. Uh, boss, Pete's here to see you. Handyman! together again. The Bonnie and Clyde of Manhattan Island. Parker, you're fired. Oh, come on, Chief. Don't call me that. Do I look like sitting bull to you? No, I'm sorry. I apologize. But please, don't fire me. I need the job. You should have thought of that before you got the bugle into this mess. Mr. Jameson, the police didn't even hold him. You can't fire Yes, him. I can. And you keep out of this. Parker, you've got five minutes to get out of this building. How'd it go? Great, I got fired. Peter, wait. There she is. She's beautiful. <laughs> hey, you don't look so good. Oh, just tired. Well, I guess we're all exhausted. No, oh, but it's worth it. The world wanted proof. Now they've got it. And if this were plastic explosive instead of modeling clay, we could make it go boom. I think it would explode. I know. What do we do now? Maybe we should write a book? What do you think? <laughs> Carla? Weren't you guys monitoring the radiation levels? I thought we were. We thought wrong. You all right? I'm fine. But I wasn't working directly with the plutonium like Carla was. We've got to get her to the hospital. What about the bomb? Well, forget the bomb. She's got radiation poisoning. She could die. Oh, really? You want to help? You're sure you're not just worried that you're going to lose your chance to get an interview with Spider-Man? No, it's not that way. You know what I wish? I wish I'd never heard of him. If it hadn't been for him, I'd still have my job. The night the plutonium was taken, you were with him that night, were you? Yes. Well, then, if he would come forward, he could clear you. In fact, you could clear each other. Peter, just leave me alone, please. Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson, please. Doc, Doc, say she's going to be all right. I wish I could. 
You know those are radiation burns, don't you? How did you get them? Um, we were working in the lab in the university. There's a lot of radioactive material. Right. I'll have to report this. Do whatever you have to do. Just make her well. Hello? Hello, Pete. Pete, it's Rita. Listen, we just sent a reporter over to the hospital. One of the girls from the university just showed up in emergency. She's got radiation sickness. Radiation sickness? Well, what's her name? Uh, Carla Wilson. Oh, no. easy it was. We weren't going to explode it. We're going to give it back. Some people tried to kidnap me because they thought I had the plutonium. Do you realize... Do you realize what they could do with an atomic bomb? Peter, relax. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, we didn't get any plastique. Nothing can happen. We're going to give it back. Where is it? My place. I've been looking all over for you. I've got good news. I called my editor and he'll pay you five hundred dollars to help me get the interview with Spider-Man. Oh, that's that, that's just great, Gail. That's terrific. But right now I have a very important. Uh, my aunt is sick. I have to take her some medicine. May I come with you? No. What she has is very contagious. What is it? Well, nobody seems to know. It's just really, really bad. Are you afraid of getting it? I've already had a shot. For what? Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson, please. Peter! Peter,
Benson, and get up on the roof. Keep your eye on that front street. Modeling clay. But I think we can find some real plastic explosive. Not bad. The outer sphere is containing most of the radiation. We can handle it. Get it down to the car. Get up there, Angel. small jet. Angel, you and Benson put the limousine on a cargo flight and stay with it at all times. Don't worry, Mr. White. We won't want anybody near it. Gentlemen, I'd say we have a situation here. The bomb were to explode in the city. What could we expect? If it's still in the city. Well, let's say it is. Ten pounds of plutonium could have a yield of as much as 15 kilotons. Now, if that were to explode in Wall Street in the middle of a weekday... If the public hears about this, there'll be unbelievable panic. This must be kept out of the newspapers as long as possible. You understand that, Parker? Yeah, I understand. Well, I guess this lets you off the hook. But not Spider-Man. Oh, not quite. He could still be involved. Parker, let me ask you something. Deep down... Do you really think this bomb will explode? Well, let me put it to you this way. As far as we know, since 1945, everyone who has attempted to explode an atomic bomb has succeeded on the first try. How come you called me so late? I was just going home. Well, this will just take a minute. And besides, it's only 3.15 in California. What has one got to do with the other? I need a favor, and I wanted to wait until Mr. Jameson had gone home. Yeah, but what does that have to do with the time in California? Rita, do you think your friend on the force could check on a California license for me? Now, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. 481. Uh-huh. O-L-R. Yeah, what's this all about? All I can say is it might be very important to a friend of mine. Anyone I know? No. Well, yes. Oh, that friend. Uh, there's somebody at my door. Can you call me back? That boy's got more things shaking than a belly dancer in an earthquake. Gail, what a pleasant surprise. Not for long. Why, is something the matter? You just dumped me at the hospital. No, 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 you dumped me. Remember, I came out of the men's room and you were gone. Wrong O. You went out the window because I went in after you. You followed. Okay, right. I had to meet somebody. Right. You met Spider-Man, didn't you? Yes, I did. 
Then why can't I meet him? Because you can't. Now look, it's hard enough for him as it is. Why don't you just forget this whole thing? Is that what you want? Peter, as long as I am a working professional in this business, I know how to keep professional secrets. My paper wants this interview pretty bad. Peter, I might be able to get you more money. It's not the money. Hello. Hi, this is the night shift. Oh, yeah, Rita, what'd you find out? Well, California 4810LR is registered to the White Import Export Company of Los Angeles. I knew it. Thank you, Rita. Thank you very much. You are terrific. Ah, oh, you're just saying that. But you're right. Later. What's up? I just figured out where the plutonium is. Excellent. I want the device completed immediately. You already have a buyer? Well, several curious nibbles, but nothing you would call a real bite. Truthfully, it's been rather disappointing. I think I may have to uh, try a new approach with this piece of merchandise. You don't get your hands on an atomic bomb just every day. You're right. It is a rather unique opportunity. An opportunity that should be exploited with imagination and... Uh, a sense of style, wouldn't you think? I'd say we'll get right on it. You cannot keep following me like this. Oh, yes, I can, and I will until I get that interview with Spider-Man. You are the stubbornest woman. I, I like to call it persistence. Now, you wait here. That's good, Pete. You got eaten right out of your hands. I'm glad you were able to see me See us again, Mr. Jameson. You won't regret it, I promise you. I doubt it. What was it you wanted to tell me? Well, first, I want to thank you for giving me my job back. But secondly, I do have a special request. I hope you're not going to ask me for a raise. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. It's just that I need some expense money. You see, I found out where the plutonium is. Really? Where? Los Angeles. If you think you can con me into a trip to California, you can forget it. I'm not trying to con you, Mr. Jameson. It's just that... That's where the plutonium is, and the only way I can afford to get there is if the bugle sends me. You've got as much chance of going to California at my expense as you have of walking upside down on that ceiling. Yes. Well, what, what I'm about to tell you, the bugle cannot print, and neither can the examiner. We can't print what? The missing plutonium has been used to build a bomb. An atomic bomb? If you don't believe me, ask Captain Barbera. Yes. Could be the story of the year, the century. Wait a minute now, you can't print that. I mean, the public would panic. But if I help find the bomb, then the bugle would have an exclusive. Oh. Which it could share with the examiner. Wait, so, I, but why California? Spider-Man told me about the license number. Spider-Man? I mean, you got this from Spider-Man? Well, we, we sort of worked it out together, yes. I wouldn't believe anything that that weirdo tells me. I would. Tell you what, Peter. I will get the examiner to finance your trip if you get me that interview with Spider-Man and if, when you're on the West Coast, you get a story, my paper runs it with my byline. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're still working for the Bugle, remember? Does that mean you'll send me to California? You're holding a gun at my head. Oh, not a gun, Mr. Jameson, just another newspaper. <sighs> All right, you win. Peter, I'll get you more money. Money isn't everything. He's right, money isn't everything. Giving up so soon? Kidding. May I use your phone? Help yourself. Long distance. Thank you very much, Mr. Jameson. I'll get you some great pictures. I promise you, I really will. And I'll call you, I'll call you every single night. You won't have to. I'm going with you. You're what? 
Why do you think I trust you uh, 3,000 miles away with my expense account? Uh, Rita. Yeah, boss. Oh, you uh, make two reservations for Parker and me. We're flying to Los Angeles. Uh, you sure you don't want to make that three? Three? Why three? Because I just called my editor and I'm going with you. Sunset Hotel. Good morning. Oh. Why don't we all meet at the pool after we're settled? Pool? Why the pool? Well, I love the sun. Oh, all right. Well, I'll be there in a minute. I just have to check on one thing. No, you don't, Parker. Now, we're going to meet at the pool. You can do that afterwards. Sir, this will just take a moment. Parker, I... Okay. All right. I'm surprised he doesn't have all of us stay in the same room. <laughs> That'll be two dollars, please. Two dollars for a glass of orange juice? And for service with a smile. Oh, here. Here you go. Oh, and please bring him a glass of lemonade without the sugar. Without the sugar? Won't that be a little sour? Uh-huh. It should match your disposition perfectly. Where's Parker? Right. It shouldn't be taking him so long. Why don't you stay here, and I'll go see if I can find him. All right. I wanted to try to get some shots from up here. A light meter? Peter, I know a little bit about photography, and I've never seen a light meter like that. No, you're right. It's not a light meter. Yeah. Uh -huh. What is it? To tell you the truth, this belongs to Spider-Man. It picks up a signal from the homing device that he attached to that white limousine I told you about. Are you getting a signal? Well, yeah. It's got a range of 15 miles. You mean that'll take us to them? Should. Peter, tell me something truthfully. Are you Spider-Man? <laughs> Do I look like the kind of guy that could run up and down the side of a building? <laughs> no. I don't know what got into me. <laughs> but he's here at the hotel, isn't he? As a matter of fact, he's a lot closer to you than you'd ever expect. Are you sure? Well, thank you, Flora. That was the office. Some man with a very youthful voice who was inquiring about a white limousine registered to the White Import-Export Company. Maybe somebody spotted it outside the kids of Portland. He knew the California license number. We did lose one of the New York plates. Where's the car now? Angel and Benson are in Hollywood. Well, when they come back, I want you to go over the car. Very carefully. You don't think anybody could have followed us out here? <laughs> Anything can happen. And with this much at stake, I don't see how we can be too cautious. Mr. White, uh, has there been any response? A little too soon, I think. With my kind of proposal, I would imagine there will have to be some kind of discussion. Wouldn't you love to see how they're taking it? One billion dollars in gold. Not one million, one bit. The mayor was gonna die. Well, he's certainly no biker. <laughs> yeah, and he wants to deliver it to a bank in Costa Rica. You still think your Spider-Man is involved? Oh, that guy's off the wall, but this is pretty big. Uh, I don't know. New York doesn't have that kind of money. Not just New York. He's blackmailing the whole country. Well, could you try again? It's an emergency. 
Okay, okay, leave a message for all of them. And please have Mr. Jameson call his office in New York. Yes, New York. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. I don't suppose they said where they were going. You're kidding. Parker, this is ridiculous. We came to Los Angeles to look for an atomic bomb. Not to ride around Hollywood like a bunch of tourists. Leave him alone, Mr. Jameson. He knows what he's doing. Oh, really? Do you know how many cars there are in Los Angeles? Do you realize what the odds are against our finding a white limousine? The odds are not as bad as you think, are they, Peter? No, they're not bad at all. As a matter of fact, I think we're getting warm. Call the police. No, there's no time. They're leaving. We'll have to follow. Looks like we've grown a tail. They must have spotted us. Parker, what are you doing? Hold on, boss. like they used to. The way you were driving, I'm not surprised. What do you do? Follow them on foot? Of course not. Parker! Wait! Hi, folks. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I try this out? Well, sure. Hop on. Get the feel of it. Fire it out. Can I just take it for a test run? <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, it's okay. I'll leave my sister here as collateral. Your sister? <laughs> Say, have you got another helmet? Well, sure. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? Oh, listen. Everything will be fine. Our dad's right behind us, and he'll take care of everything. <laughs> You said you'd take care of everything, Jeff. Uh, you are their father, aren't you? Their father? Parker! Is there one of these contraptions here that, that I can ride? You can handle something like that?
I don't know how you did it, but Angel doesn't fail twice. There has to be a first time for everything. for you two. You two missed all the excitement. Spider-Man was here. He was. And I got to see him in action. He was terrific. He went swinging through the barn, grabbed me out of this great big guy's hands. We went flying through the air and landed in a haystack. What's that? It's a transmitter. It belongs to Spider-Man. The one that was on the white limousine? I'm afraid so. We had a problem. Someone's been following us. I think it was that kid, Parker. So it was him checking out the car. We lost him, but then that Spider-Man showed up again. Spider-Man? But you just said... I did, I did. I threw him off the building. Fifteen stories. There's no way he could have made it. This is very disturbing. Spider-Man could be dangerous. I think we'll have to accelerate the timetable. And he just called again. If the government doesn't agree to his demands, by 6 p.m. New York time tomorrow, he says he'll explode the bomb where it'll do the most damage. What? Well, I, 
has to mean Manhattan. I knew it. Here I am in Los Angeles acting like some fool tourist, and everything's happening in New York. I'll get the first plane out of here I can, Rita. I should never listen to you two. Why would the people with the bomb be in Los Angeles if they plan to explode it in Manhattan? Maybe they don't have the bomb at all. No, that's not it. it. Must be missing something. Yes, the last flight to New York. No, wait, sir. We can't go. The bomb is here, believe me. Peter, you may be wrong. The bomb would do more damage in New York. It just makes more sense. No, I'm not wrong. There's just got to be a reason. <laughs> Mr. Jameson is really going to be steaming when he finds out we left the hotel without him. Well, there's no other way. He slows me, us, down. Sort of a long shot, isn't it? Well, it's the only clue we have. Excuse me. Uh, hi. Can I help you? Well, I hope so. There was a white limousine parked out front yesterday. I believe it belongs to a man named Mr. White. Do you know how I could get in touch with him? Uh, what do you want to see him about? You do know him? Yes, he owns the building and he manages most of the recording artists who record here. But you haven't answered my question. Oh, well, my friend here is a singer and we wanted to see him about managing her. Oh, that's right. We heard that he's just a genius at getting your career started. Uh-huh. Want to wait here just for a minute? Singer. Let's take a look around. Right. That's what he said. Keep him there. We're only three minutes away. Okay. When the sun sets on a misunderstanding, you say you love me and everything's right. You say you love me and everything's right. When a hound dog is howling on my street, when a wild man loses control, is it okay if we walk? They're in studio too. Get him down here alone. Okay. Take care of the girl. I'll take care of him. Murray, let's go to the top and try it again. He wants to see you alone. Oh, oh it's okay. I'll be right back. When the night flyer can't see. Take her. 
Look, what do you want? Look, I don't have time to play games with you. Are you crazy or something? Leave me alone. Get out of here. If you don't tell me where they took her, I'm going to be the craziest person you ever saw. I'm calling the police. That's a good idea. I have a feeling they'd like to talk to you. Me? Why? Well, you are an accomplice to a kidnapping. I don't know anything about any kidnapping. Oh, no? I think you do. But we'll let the police decide whether you're lying or not. Listen, I don't know anything about your girlfriend. I swear it. Where is she? Mr. White. That's a big house. It's just outside of town. It's in the hills. Two of you. You couldn't take care of one college boy. There were just too many people around. Oh, I don't like any of this. Too many things going wrong. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of the kid and Spider-Man. But Angel, I am worried. I think I have to do more than just bluff. Very nice. Why do I have to dress this way? Two reasons. One, because I like women in bikinis. And two, I feel safer when I know there's no place for them to hide any weapons. LeBeau, get the device. We have an errand to do. You're really going to do it? You're really going to kill hundreds of thousands of people? I honestly hope I won't have to. One thing I don't understand. Why Los Angeles when you made your demands in New York? Simple. The president's speech begins at 3 o'clock. Unless my demands are met, you'll never finish. Security men all over that building. You'll never get near it. I won't have to. There's a brand new building nearby that'll do very nicely. Remember, we're talking about an atomic bomb. <laughs>
Where are the others? They've gone downtown to plant a bomb. Downtown? The president's in town. He's going to make a speech at 3 o'clock, and they're going to plant the bomb on a building nearby. Did he say which building? No, but they did say it was a brand new building. Okay, you call the police and tell them about the bomb. Right. Wait a minute. They're not going to believe me. They're going to think it's some kind of a hoax. At least they'll get the president out of there. Wait a minute. It's 2.30. It's late. There might still be time. Anyway, it's worth a try. Right. Operator, this is an emergency. I want the police. Plenty of time to meet the helicopter and get a safe distance away. Look, you can still change your mind. I don't want to do it either. But I will if they force me. You want to give me that again, buddy? It's a stunt to publicize a new rock group, like the one Evil Knievel plans to do. You mean dive out of a plane without a parachute and land in a haystack? Right, except I'm going to land on top of a building on an airbag. The only thing is, I'll have to pay you later. Don't worry about it. It's on me. Come on, I'll find somebody to take you out. I know there are security men all over the hotel, but this is an atomic bomb. It doesn't have to be in the building. It can be anywhere. It could be blocks away. You must get the president out of the building.
be meeting Spider-Man again. in the area. How did you get there? Oh, I'm sorry. That's privileged information. What you mean is that Spider-Man helped you. My lips are sealed. Well, it doesn't matter how you did it. This really makes the whole trip worthwhile. As a matter of fact, you know, I've got, to, I've got to let you have this whole suite here for the rest of the week at my expense. That is really nice of you. Thank you. But, Mr. Jameson, today is Friday. There are only two more days left in the week. Well, what do you want for nothing? It's getting late. I've got a pack. I'll talk to you later. You know, I still didn't get my interview with Spider-Man. Well, you got to see him in action. You should be able to get a good story out of that. Peter, let's be honest. Where were you after they took me from the recording studio? Well, I was, um... I, I was looking for you, of course. Looking for me, but you found Spider-Man. <laughs> well, actually, he found me. How? How? Uh, I was on my way back to your hotel. Looking for me? Right. When he just happened to call you when you were there? Yes, that's it, exactly. You know, I'm not going to give up. You know, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't. No, Parker. You're not bad. But you're no Spider-Man. Well, how do you know? You've never seen me in tights. <laughs> That's true. But if you're willing to put some on, I'm willing to reconsider. 